Henry Yakarundi, the innovator behind the innovative the entrepreneur from Rwanda. Au plaisir d'accueillir aujourd'hui Henry Nyakarundi. Pour en parler, l'équipage reçoit son concepteur, Monsieur Henry Nyakarundi. What's going on, everybody? Today I wanted to do a vlog uh, regarding the need in uh, very, very innovative products when it comes to uh, investment or raising capital. You see, there is a, a, a huge problem in Africa between supply and demand, and it's not about to be solved anytime soon. You know, I've been spending, A-Red is the first company that I've spent time raising capital and then we raise some. We have more failure than success like most companies obviously but raising capital have really opened uh, the door on understanding how the game is played but the supply and demand never match and the, the, the supply has power over the demand because there's so much low supply and huge demand. I mean we're talking about um, a population of 1.3 billion that will become 4 billion people in, by the end of the century, right? Uh, if you, well, not everybody is an entrepreneur, but you multiply that same exponentially of, of, of entrepreneur that's happening in, in, um, in Africa, and you realize quickly that, you know, if you look at the average deal that most VCs or, or, or angel investors close on a yearly basis, you know, it, it's 10, maybe top 10, 15 deals a year uh, per funds. It's so low, it's not going to fit the demand. And what I see, and unfortunately, we're always behind. We're always uh, behind on the party, I think. Uh, uh, what I see a lot is uh, one of the technology I, I came to, to, to learn about a, it's been a few years now, it's crowd investing. Now, we all know crowdfunding. I've talked about that. I've done a few. But we always, we've done some, some crowd lending. I've also used platform, and we, we, we raised, you know, some lending capital from, from Germany with the help of uh, Green Tech Capital. Um, and, uh, but now, crowd investing uh, or crowd equity, is, the, is, is, is booming. Um, and what pushed me to do this video is a company called SeedRS.com. I'll put the link somewhere uh, during the video. And, uh, and it opened my eyes because, you know, we have millions and millions of diaspora. Now, let me start, number one, by the flaw of the, the, the angel investment VC world, right? It's a world of connection. It's a world of network. It's a world of you have to perfectly match or as, as perfectly as possible to their need, to what they're looking for. Um, but it's an unperfect world, like most things, obviously. But it, it's a closed world. It's a, it's a world that you have to spend so much time networking, finding the right people on the inside, talking to the right people so they can give you some input of how to present your package what things to do, how to, to, to sell it. Um, it's not a, um, it, and, and it's a limited world because there's so much deals they can close in a year. And of course, they put an emphasis on deals that they, they, they like internally because at the end of the day, it's human making decisions. And a lot of time, it's not their money. People don't understand that. Angel investors, yeah, VC, no. Um, I'm not talking about um, the, the equity investment. I mean, uh, there's other a layer to this, but but uh, VC um, VC use other people's money, and they charge a fee for their services to analyze and all those things. But it's usually never their money, so they also have to answer to stakeholder their money, make sure that they're happy with the deals. And as we all know, and I spent a lot of vlogs on that. A lot of the VC money comes from abroad, so they don't necessarily 
invest much about African entrepreneur. And even though uh, I've seen some increase, let me be positive for once, but the, 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 the reality is uh, there's, there's still a huge gap of African funders getting uh, VC money compared to other funders doing business in Africa. And then there's also another factor uh, where you have to have entities in their countries uh, to build a layer of, of, of uh, confidence. But hey, it's their money. They have the right to put conditions. I always said it. If, you know, whoever putting the money, he decide what to do with that money. But how do you democratize access to funding? That's just something I've been thinking about for a long time. I used to think crowd, crowdfunding was the key, but it doesn't give value to the one who's giving money. It's just, it's just a short-lived. Now, some people have, have raised a lot of money on that aspect, um, on crowdfunding, but you know, I've never met any African entrepreneur that I raise uh, a lot of money on crowdfunding. But crowd investing is a different uh, approach, right? It's, it's the same model, but a different approach, because now you get some equity structure. Uh, and I think this is the solution, guys. And I truly believe that crowd investing, um, especially in the equity side, not lending is a little bit different, but equity. Equity um, will be much, much easier, especially in some sectors like agricultural sector. That takes a long time to, to build. Tech sector, for sure. Uh, of course, they'll be limited to companies that want to expand, go to multiple countries. I mean, we have, I, I don't know the number, but there's billions and billions of dollars that diaspora bring back or give back or send back every year to Africa. Billions and billions. And usually it's to help family relative you know small amount and on the fees alone the amount of money they spend on fees is ridiculous right and i i, I don't understand that I've, and and please i only know one crowd investing crowd investing platform the, all, the only one i found that was credible trying to do something but i tried to contact the owner and i didn't get no reply uh, it's a company from South Africa. I forgot the, the, the name. I'll put it also on there. But I didn't see major traction and, and, um, to it. And I know it's a big, it's, it's a big endeavor because um, you have to find a, a set of group of people that are willing to give and invest. And then you have to vet companies um, to, um, that can qualify. But what I like about the platform now is you're no longer limited to the different funds available. Now you have democratized. You have brought, you know, thousands and thousands of people that give a hundred dollars. You can limit to a thousand, for example, to limit their risk. Um, and of course, if they want to give more, they can get special permission if they have the right. But I think you have to vet on both sides, vet the investors. But when you have five thousand, ten thousand people that can give $50, $100, they vet it. They, they, they have to invest at least uh, in one project um, out of every two projects, right? And, and it, it opened the doors to a lot of things. The, the, the level of risk of failure is much, much lower, number one. You can have now hundreds, even thousands of, of companies you can invest in. Imagine the impact. Imagine how much money can flow now back uh, into those companies. The challenge now is we have 50 plus countries in Africa, right? And, and so you have to have a structure that select areas where you have to register your company where you can get financing. Countries with strong policies and strong rules for investors or protect investors like Mauritius, uh, Botswana, of course, Rwanda is, is one of the top <laughs> ranking. And, uh, um, uh, what else? Uh, and then, you know, then you, you, you create a cluster of places where, okay, if you want your company to get investment, you have to have an entity there. Because you cannot invest in every of those countries. It will create, um, the, the legality of things will be true huge but this 
whoever's going to create this platform. And it doesn't have to be one. It can be several. Actually, we need more. Because like I said, you, with 5,000 vetted investors, uh, let's say they're giving $50 per deal, right? $50, they can do that, what, 10 times, 100 times a year? You know, uh, 100 comp can you imagine 100 companies a, a year? That's just with 5,000 people, right? And I'm, 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 I'm low-blowing this. Right? It can be much, much uh, higher. But even you, you, you spend $50 per deal 10 times. That's 500 you know, $500 a year. You can do 20 times. Um, 100 times, that's 5,000. How, how, how many times do you spend 5,000 a whole year on some dumb stuff, right? You know, stuff that don't bring you no value. So this is with just 5,000 vetted investors. Now you have 10,000. Um, you have more. That could be a game changer. And I'm yet to understand why we're always behind these things. But I know it's a platform that requires huge investment, huge research and development. Um, and, of course, uh, and, and I, I want to put it out there. If anybody in Africa trying to do this, uh, I, I, I'll be open to be on the board, man, and to support it. Because you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time doing research on, on, on all those things and, and uh, trying to see... Uh, of course, I, I don't have time to do it, but I, I would love to support um, on this project if, if whoever groups that want to do this seriously. And, and whoever is trying to do an investment fund and all, please scratch the VC fund and all. Look for ways to build a real platform. And, and I don't understand why we haven't done that seriously on a big scale. Because we have the numbers. You know, we have the re we, they, they, there's, we can put together five, ten thousand people into a platform vetted, and of course it has to be vetted. You can't just put anybody who just want to be part of it. No, it has to be serious. You have to put condition on both sides, uh, and it could be a game changer because VCs are not going to change Africa. Period. I don't care what people say. There's too many entrepreneurs out there that are left out, and it's not the VC fault. They just don't. They cannot produce as many deals as they they could technology can you can automate the whole system right if you have a a, a, a very good process you can automate the, the 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 process to the point where even on the contract side we have technology now that digitize contracts um to the t and you don't have to have huge amount of human resources to do all that in the beginning yeah but as, as you grow it will now require you it's scalable that's what i mean VC is very difficult to scale. That's why you see only VC in few countries. And even those few countries, they do one or two deals uh, every year. I've yet to see any VC. I've yet to find a VC that do uh, 10 deals a year uh, in the whole continent of Africa. I'm talking about VC for seed uh, capital or A-round capital. The other ones are a little bit different, but uh, I've yet to find any. So, so this is what I want to talk about, man. I truly believe... Um, just like we're talking about all this technology have disrupted the game, the VC world is about to end, right? Um, it's not going to disappear, but it will end. It, it, it just doesn't bring huge value uh, to the bottom line, especially in Africa. And if anybody wants to learn about what um, uh, equity, crowded equity is, check out this seedrs.com. Uh, it's one of the best platforms I've seen so far. They have huge, huge success. Actually, the way I found about them is through a, a, a young company that operates in Africa. That, that it's, it's, it's a fintech company uh, that raised capital through, through their platform. And when I start getting deeper and deeper, and you can see the average raise in that is, 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 is amazing. And the success rate they have is amazing also because they have a clear you know, definition what the platform should accomplish for the investors. And of course, they have a vetting uh, a process for the, for the companies that gives a certain confidence to the investors. And I, I truly hope, I truly hope all those investors are trying to change the game in Africa, trying to find a way. You know, most investors, they do the same thing. They go to the African bank um, fund, um, 
to all those traditional banks to raise capital, to the EUs and all those things, to get some funding to traditional investors, to put some money together to be able to, you know, invest in some of those companies out there. And I, I, it's, it's laughable, the, the impact they have on the ground. It's really laughable. Um, so I hope it gives you guys a, a certain understanding. And for those, um, for those that are looking at this, uh, this problematic, man, please look really carefully and try to make it on a national African scale. Uh, we see too many product that are on local scale, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But for this type of product, it has to start on a national scale uh, to really have an impact. But it has to be done right. All right, man, put some comment below, man. Uh, you know, if you have more information you can share, this is the top, the, 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 the ideas I want to share. The, if, if you've experienced some of the crowd investors investing or if you know any other crowd investing in Africa uh, that you can select. Because the, the biggest problem, I'm going to end with this, the biggest problem uh, right now um, with, you know, you, you can't go in Europe as an African company to raise capital, unless you register in Europe, to raise those capital in those different platforms. And that's why I emphasize African. It has to be for African entrepreneur um, to really scale up this investment fund for the African world. All right, guys, take care.